Hello and thanks for staying with us on Africa Independent Television AIT. Welcome to People, Politics and Power. I am Imoni Amarere. On this edition, we are turning our attention to the APC position on restructuring. Specifically, we are focusing on the recommendation that states should be granted the prerogative to set up appellate courts. Under the present arrangement, there is only one Supreme Court and one Court of Appeal with some judicial divisions. In the recommendations by the APC, APC Committee on True Federalism, any or all of the 36 states are at liberty to establish their courts of appeal. It is not clear from the recommendations who will formulate the rules and whether or not there will be uniform rules across the states. This recommendation is a throwback to the period when the regions, particularly the Western region, had a court of appeal. This situation is similar to the practice in the United States of America, where some states establish intermediate courts of appeal as the last court of resort. The state of Columbia, for instance, established the District of Columbia Court of Appeal in 1970, which enjoys coordinate jurisdiction with the state's Supreme Court. The State Court of Appeal, by the nature of establishment, is designed to have jurisdiction over some specified issues within the state as they travel on appeal from the State High Court. Now, what is perhaps not too clear from the recommendations of the committee is whether or not this will be built into the constitution or the states may have a quasi constitution which may draw its powers from the federal constitution. Whatever it is, the APC committee favors state courts of appeal. How desirable and practicable is this? Can we afford at this time to stretch our restructuring move to that level, I mean to the judicial level? Will it help the course of justice and facilitate timeous dispensation of justice? Now what is wrong with the present structure or, and, or you know, on reflection, was justice better dispensed when the regions had their courts of appeal? We have therefore invited to the studio two lawyers to interrogate this issue. Joining me is Afam Osigwe and Matthew Okpara. Thank you, gentlemen, for finding time to join us this Friday. Thank you for having me, Maxwell Okpara. Maxwell Thank Opara. you for inviting me. All right, before we go into full discussions, let's take a look at what happened at the security summit the ongoing security summit it started yesterday here in the nation's capital, uh, Abuja. Let's take a report uh, uh, from that uh, uh, summit where, of course, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo uh, seemed to throw the weight of the federal government behind the recommendation of the RFI True Federalism Committee for state police. Nigeria welcome 2018 with a series of gruesome statistics. The brutal murder of 23 worshippers returning from Christmas service in Putakot. Over 70 killed in Benue by headsmen, while elsewhere in Kaduna, a traditional ruler and his wife were similarly killed. Added to these challenges are kidnapping and armed banditry necessitating this security summit as a platform to brainstorm over the worsening security situation in the country. The Sumu Senate has also charged our committee with the task of organizing this summit, which involves the leadership of all arms of the federal government, state governments, traditional and religious leaders, interest groups, civil society organizations, the media and other experts, to collaborate around the need to identify solutions on acute and long-term security challenges. This provided the setting 
for the landmark announcement by the Nigerian Vice President Yemi Oshibajo endorsing state police for the first time by a Nigerian central government since the First Republic. We cannot realistically police a country the size of Nigeria centrally from Abuja. State police and other community policing methods are clearly the way to go. The endorsement of state police is both political reality by the All Progressive Congress central government and the realization that the federal police is grossly incapable to handle some of the security challenges that can best be tackled by localized forces. For a country our size to meet the one policeman to 400 persons, the UN prescribed ratio, would require nearly triple our current police force. Far more funding of the police, far more funding of the military and security agencies is required. But what Nigeria may need to find more is a political will to accept and to do whatever is necessary to protect itself. Permit me to observe that those who are here in this room have the capacity to bring about the change in this situation, to end the violence and bring Sukkot. We have the capacity, do we have the political will? I dare say political will is what is required and it is my hope that we shall marshal out a legitimate instrument against this problem. In the time being, the search for answers to Nigeria's security challenges is on and it is amid great expectations that this summit would offer directions. Nigeria of our dream, the Nigeria we need is the united, indissoluble and cohesive Nigeria which guarantees equity, fairness, justice and prosperity for its citizens. That is our focus on people politics and power. It is fresh, insightful, impactful. It's a must watch. People, politics and power on AIT. Join us to build bridges of unity. All right, so like you heard in that report, for the very first time, a central government, a federal government in Nigeria, seemed to be in favor of state police. Now, we, the federal government, also favor uh, some kind of uh, devolution of judicial powers to the states. Well, among the recommendations by the Governor Erufai through Federalism Committee is the call for judicial reforms. It recommended that states should have their own appeal courts. Let's hear the chairman of that committee explain what the proposal is all about. There are also recommendations on the judiciary consistent with the party's commitment to devolve powers. We believe that the existence of the National Judicial Council as the single judicial uh, authority in Nigeria is operating a unitary judicial system in a federal system. So we have proposed amendments to the Constitution to create a state judicial council that will appoint and discipline judges within a state, while the National Judicial Council will exercise control over the appointment, discipline of judges of the federal government funding. And we, by that also, we have proposed the creation of a state court of appeal, so that from the high court, you can first appeal to the state court of appeal before it goes to the Supreme Court of the Federation. Again, this is consistent with federal, federal practice all over the world, and uh, we have drafted bills to enable the party and the government uh, do these amendments if they wish. We have uh, uh, made, uh, we, we propose constitutional amendments about state realignment and boundary adjustments to. Sections A, subsection 2 of the Constitution, and A, subsection 4, if, uh, if required. And then we have uh, a, a constitutional amendment to enable a referendum to be undertaken on burning national issues. Right now, our Constitution has no room for referendum, only in the case of creation of states. But we now propose an amendment to section 8 of the Constitution to enable 
the government of the federation of the government of the state to determine that this is an important issue for a state. We want to hear a friend of the here directly from the voices of the people that affect that. All right, thank you so much for staying with us. My guests in the studio are Maxwell Okpara and Afam Osigwe. Thank you, gentlemen, once again thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so there you heard Governor Erufa, who is the chairman of the committee, explaining that probably what we are having, I mean, what exactly we're having in Nigeria today, is that we have a unitary judicial system being applied in a federal system. Is that the idea, Mr. Afam Osigwe? Well, uh, he's correct. Um, I mean, it's only in a federation like Nigeria that will only be a federation in name, but not in reality. I mean, so you can't in a federal state have appointments for judicial officers for a state, whether it be customary court of appeal, Sharia court of appeal, high court, being made by a national judicial council. And you also don't have in a federal state appeal on what I would call local issues, like issues of customary law and some uh, religious Islamic personal rights, going all the way to the Supreme Court, inheritance issues, just buzzing on simple contracts that don't really have anything to do with federal law or do not raise any issue bordering on rights of the individuals or raise any serious constitutional issues going all the way to the Supreme Court. And let me explain why we have to have the number of justices we have and then the complaints about backlog of cases and then the long delay in the hearing of appeals, sometimes for in the Supreme Court for up to eight, nine years. And they just about every matter goes to the Supreme Court. It can't work that way. We need to, like, I mean, I'm okay. I'm, I agree with the recommendation. We need to allow the states have what it is called the Supreme Court or Court of Appeal of the state, where appeals with respect to certain matters will end. And only issues that are of public interest, that have some political nature or touch on federal law or raise constitutional issues as touching on the rights of a person or some other race of other serious constitutional issue, not just because lawyer, a lawyer has called it a constitutional lawyer, then it proceeds to the Supreme Court. It can't just be. The court can continue to entertain all manner of appeals, even on local issues that ought to end at the level of the state. So I think if these, amend if these recommendations can be given effect by the constitution being amended and it's being specified, then yes, these um, court levels of court should exist and certain matters cannot go beyond this court. I think we would have started on the road to also ensuring that we have a judicial system that has a federal character and also in seeing that some cases which ought not to keep going on all the way to the Supreme Court get there so that some cases will end and then because there must be an end to litigation. Mm. Mr. Okbara, have you given some thoughts to this uh, since the recommendations became public knowledge about whether or not uh, we should actually be looking at uh, some devolution of judicial responsibilities and powers to states as against the unitary system, judicial system that we have in Nigeria today? Yes, of course. I, I've said it in a different forum. Uh, before now that uh, the issue of uh, I mean, customary uh, issue coming all the way from customary court to customary court of appeal down to a uh, Supreme Court is uncalled for. What are they doing there? If we, just like uh, Afamu Sigwe said, if we should have court of appeal in a state that handled issue of um, customary right of occupancy that has to do with uh, land, that has to do with um, um, customary issues, let it end at the customary court of appeal that is being organized, uh, regulated by the state, then when it has to do with interpretation of constitution... Do we have do, don't we have customary courts of appeal okay. at the moment in states? Yes. We do. Yes, yes. yes. yes we do. Mm -hmm. but, but, but you can still appeal from there up to Supreme Court. Okay, so they are, they, they, their jurisdiction is not final no. on such issues? No, of course. Okay. Yes, because we have a lot of issues. Now, if we have something like interpretation, interpretation of the constitution, election matters, then we cannot talk about the court. But be that as it may, if we can have the normal court of appeal in every state, it will also help some issues. If you can say, okay, if we have customary court, of, uh, customary court in court in every state, if issues that has to do with interlocutory matters, let it end there. It will also go a long way of achieving what uh, Malam Erofai was trying to uh, 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 say in our constitution. But the issue that we have something like um, um, uh, uh, customary issue, coming from uh, customary court, there to customary court of appeal, up to Supreme Court, is uncalled for. So how is that likely to help 
in resolving the challenges that Mr. Afan Usigwe uh, posed earlier on when he talked about the uh, accumulation of cases in our courts. Uh, sometimes I know of cases that have been at the Supreme Court for as long as 15, 20 years waiting for a resolution. How, how is this likely to help? Now, uh, I just came in from Lagos this morning. I did a matter there at Court of Appeal in Ibo Lagos yesterday. This matter, we have been doing it since 2009. And this is an issue that has to do with uh, uh, land, customer right of occupants there in Lagos, Badagui. So we started from the High Court. Now we are in a uh, Court of Appeal, Lagos, talking about an interlocutory issue. So these are the things that would have, if we have such a structure in Lagos State, there will be no need of going to Court of Appeal, Lagos Division. As I speak to you, I was there yesterday. They gave me 22nd of November to come back. And you see that, yes. So there's no end in sight. Yes. Because uh, uh, of course, of course. there's al always the opportunity to appeal to my, a higher court. Yes, my client is also getting frustrated. He's being discouraged. So that is what we are saying. If we have this issue, anything that has to do with a custom, let it commence from customary record and end in customary court of appeal that is being regulated by the state. Because it's the state that even know the culture. When you uh, uh, bring somebody from Adamawa and you made him a Supreme Court judge or court of appeal to come and decide an issue that has to do with custom in Imo State, you can see that if the panel leave their three and one is from Adamawa, the other one is from Bayesa, the other one is from Ikiti, they will find it difficult. They will just adjourn in order to ask questions. So that to understand the customs of, of, of the of that, area yes. that they are dealing with. Then when we have some, uh, some matters that has to do with Islam, then something like Zanfara, it can end there. You don't need to bring somebody from Enugu who is a Christian, the other person from Rivers who is a Christian, the other person from Anambra to come and adjudicate on Islamic issue. That is a problem. M Mr. Sigwe, uh, uh, opponents of this recommendation will say that as of today, there are courts of appeal, divisions in a number of the states in Nigeria. How is that different from what is now being recommended? You see, the idea of this devolution, to my mind, is not about the absence of courts, but to streamline the judicial system so that certain matters will only follow a certain pathway. The present scenario where all matters must ultimately get to the Supreme Court my understanding is what is trying to be discouraged. Now, there will still be Court of Appeals, Federal Court of Appeals, being responsible for appeals arising from certain states. Now, and only certain matters will be able to proceed beyond the states to the Federal Court, be it the Federal Court of Appeal or to the Supreme Court. And now, on some issues too, if it's been entertained by the Supreme Court of a state or Court of Appeal, whatever name it is called, it may well be that from there it can go straight to the Supreme Court. Now, let me also say this. I should not be mistaken in saying that creation of this court will eliminate appeals. In the United States, I understand, about 10,000 appeals are lodged annually to the U.S. Supreme Court. But the U.S. Supreme Court has discretionary power to determine the matters that will be listed for, he accepted for hearing. Now, it will take about four justices of the court if they are of the view that the case has raised issues touching on the Constitution or is such of public importance, for example, where the matter has been decided by the different state Supreme Courts such that there has been divergent decisions and there is need for certainty for the Supreme Court to make a pronouncement to set a precedent, then the Supreme Court of the U.S. will accept that matter for hearing. And now if in a particular session, EA, appeal, we allow 10,000 appeals come and the Supreme Court only agrees and lists 100 cases for hearing, it is taken that all those appeals have failed. The, 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 the court has not found them worthy to be accepted. So it means even if 10,000 cases are accepted, are filed, and only 100 are accepted, it means 9,900 are deemed dismissed. So there will be no need that, that the cases appear in the court's docket. So lawyers may still attempt and file many cases, but it's only the ones that are accepted for hearing that qualify as live cases before the court. So the issue of having backlogs, which will last for many years, will no longer be there. Mm. So my, my take is that the idea of the courts is not because the absence of courts to hear appeals from those cases, but for need to streamline the matter of the type of cases 
that will go. But this math, this past too, will make no sense if the Supreme Court does not have some form of discretionary powers to determine what type of matter they may accept, either in public interest or because of the political interest involved in them, or because it raises a novel issue touching on rights which the court has not pronounced upon for the court to pronounce on them to create certainty in the polity, which will also discourage certain matters continue proliferating all over the place and reduce a high level of technicalities where case will move from high court to court of appeal to Supreme Court only on an interlocutory issue like he has mentioned and then for 12 years people are trying, say, trying to determine whether the court a court has jurisdiction to try a matter and a court finally Before says going I have the jurisdiction issue. go back mm. and witnesses may be dead documents may be lost so many things may have gone wrong within that period of time. And you wonder what kind of justice people will go away believing they've achieved. Certainly people will doubt whether they ever got justice, whether you win or lose. Mm. So I think this whole idea could also reduce the timeline it takes cases to go through the courts and eliminate the possibility of some cases going all the way just to achieve no issue purpose and allow those who have local knowledge of some, of some issues to be the ones to make a pronouncement on it and, and lay a matter to rest. Okay, Mr. Okpara, this recommendation, like the chairman of the committee said, would require constitutional amendment. But it will also, even after constitutional amendment, it will also require massive judicial reforms. Of course. You see, the most important one is the, the constitution. When you amend the constitution, then other states will have to adopt it in their own local uh, legislation. Just like uh, uh, Afam said, if you watch our own uh, judicial uh, system, before we have a high court, FCT high court and federal high court, mm -hmm. that's where you get appeal from there now to court of appeal. But now, after the amendment of the constitution in 2010, that establishes the, the National Industrial Court as a superior court of record, now you now see that the, the constitution did not recognize the National uh, Industrial Court as a superior court of record. But he said the the Supreme Court also give a judgment give judgment on saying that any appeal from uh, national uh, industrial court, court can be appealed to court of appeal, thereby creating more problem. The the, the, the the issue has been there whether the decision or judgment given by the national industrial court is appealable or not. On the Supreme Court, I think uh, that was last year, came up with a judgment said no, whatever decision, judgment, order made by. And, uh, it's not fine now. National it's not uh, fine. should go to court of appeal. They are by creating more workload in court of appeal. Now, if you just go to Abuja here now, the least date you can get in Abuja division here is November. November 2018. November 2018. For any listed uh, they, case now. Just to November. If you are lucky, they can give you October. That is the least you can get. Now, that, in that November, you are not even sure. We are talking about motions and interlocutory issues. But if we will be able to achieve this, and if you watch all these particular matters, you have the issue of uh, matrimonial, you have the issue of land, you have the issue of um, 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 distribution of uh, property under native law and custom. So these are the issues that must have been determined by the, by the customary court of appeal if the constitution is being uh, amended and they recognize them. Because when the constitution is being amended, the state they don't have option than to follow suit. That is the, the position. One, o one other question that has been asked along that line is whether or not this would mean that states would have their own uh, constitutions that may be subject to the federal constitution. What is the practice in other democratic federal claims that we know of? For example, in the United States or in Australia or in Canada that practices a uh, similar kind of federalism. So you see, to me, if we were to have a federal constitution that has decided to go in this direction, states should have their constitution. But with the federal constitution being supreme over the constitution of the states, mm -hmm. just like you have it in the, you had it in the First Republic, which gave this power to the regions to create their own appellate courts. Indeed, like you noted in your intro, it was only the western region that created a, a, a court of appeal. Now, if we indeed want to practice federation or federalism, federalism the way it should be practiced, the states should have their own laws. The, the component units, state and federal, should have their different constitution. But this federal constitution, like I said earlier, should be supreme over this area. But within these spheres or areas, 
that the states are competent to make laws on their constitution could make provisions to accommodate them, that you are able to raise the issue of rules. Of course, whichever, if the power is given to the states to create the courts, they will create their own rules. Even if we, the court is created by the constitution, just like the high court, that are, which provided that there shall be a high court for each state of the federation, the power is given to the chief judge of the various states, of each of the states, to make rules, to regulate practice and procedure before the court. So, I mean, this shouldn't be an issue, but if we are, if we are now, have now made up our mind that we want to... Uh, and those rules do not have to be uniform they in don't, all they states of the They don't have to be. Mm. Even in the U.S., they don't have uniform rules. In fact, even in the U.S., a few states are civil law states, while some states, most of the states are common law states. That they, these have different what meanings. Are the, what, what, what is the difference between now, this? Now, the common law is uh, those that pattern their, um, their, their judicial system, their um, case law system and all that in the, in, in the English model. Why okay. the civil law tends towards Europe, France, um, England, uh, uh, um, Germany. They have the civil law system, which also has its own effect, for example, in criminal and civil cases, we hope we, on whom a body in improving certain things is placed, even though that could be a matter of evidence in the Evidence Act. But it could also have some other legal issues. But the point I'm making is that even in the U.S., the courts don't have uniform rules. They have different modes. It depends on also on their colonial past, on their relationship with one nation or the other. But the issue is, if we want to go down this route, then the states may well consider, the consumer may well consider giving to the states the, the power to enact their own constitution to regulate certain things they do, but while it regulates the issue of the, the unity of the country, issue of defense, currency, and some other issues with respect to which a federal government must at all times have power to make laws and also take charge of inter interstate commerce and all that, security, defense, and issues of that nature. It, 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 yes, okay. I, I, no, I have a different uh, opinion on that in that regard. We don't need to have state constitution. Our constitution is there. Remember that in, the, in this current constitution, we have exclusive and concurrent lists where there is a place, uh, some issues that are reserved for federal government. Issue of immigration, police, army, and what have you. That's the exclusive list. The exclusive yes. list. Then in the concurrent list, we have something like education. Now, in our constitution, when we amend our constitution, there must be state exclusive legislative list. Something like Igwe, confirmation of uh, Igwe, or recognizing somebody as a traditional ruler. Uh, as a traditional ruler of his uh, community. What, you, you don't need to come to Abuja. It should end there in your state. If it's from your state, it should end in nowhere. Let the governor, let the state house of assembly recognize the person, do whatever thing. If you, are, if you feel agreed, go to customary court. Let customary court adjudicate whether that particular issue is necessary. Then if you are agreed to go to customary court of appeal, then it will end there. Then the issue that has to that igwe, federal government, the national assembly don't need to come there. The state house of assembly of that state had to make a law. Like if you come to my state, Imo State, we have Imo State uh, um, chieftaincy law. So that Imo State chieftaincy law is there. So what you need... And it's peculiar to Imo State. Imo State. Then we have Imo State chieftaincy law. We have a state chieftaincy law on the procedure or by which an Igwe should emerge. So you don't need to come to Abuja. But what we see, if you are not choosing to be an Igwe, you just go to a uh, high court of a, a Imo state. From there, if you lose the, if they do not give their judgment to you, you come to court of no, appeal. No, 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 from, from there, you go, go to Supreme Court. We have been seeing that. No, no, Max, Max, I think the issue, I think, my understanding is a bit different. No, what, what you're saying is uh, that I mean, making I mean, law, having constitution. Yes, whether the state should have, I mean, the yes. state may decide that this is a system of government that best suits it. I may not necessarily want that which applies in other states. I think the question to my mind is that this present idea of one size fitting all, oh, yes. is it really the best? Or should the state, with respect to matters they can make laws, be allowed by their own constitution to determine how they want to go about it? That's what, I, I think that, that's that, the that, that, that no, is no. the question I was asking. No, no, because no, no. By, by the recommendations of this company, of this committee, there will be devolution of powers. To the, the, the state so, police. So the federal, so the federal government Education, will have its exclusive so list. The, then there will be a concurrent list uh, on which the state and federal governments will have jurisdiction over. I'm and then there's the residual list. That I'm now, also saying that let there be state um, uh, exclusive list. That which in is the residual list? Is yes. it, is it Max, in the, in I, I, need to, I need to say this. I need to say this. I think an issue we need to address is the continued relevance of the concurrent list. 
I think if this is a federation, the federal government should be clear as to the areas where it should make law. And then allow the states to exclusively make laws in the areas where the constitution has given them powers. Mm. We have concurrent legislative lists, and the federal government goes on also to legislate and say, crowd out the states. Because the moment the federal government makes laws on the matter, on the, on the, the state can no longer yes. do anything about it. So if we really want to, part of the problem is the continued utilization of the powers to make laws with us in the concurrent list, thereby also rendering the states important and ensuring that the federal government not only has its own exclusive legislative list, but can also, by exercise of its powers under the concurrent list, annexes those concurrent issues and ends up making them more an exclusive thing. Because the moment the federal government makes laws, it covers the field. So the state can no longer say anything, even if it does not agree with the federation. So on an issue like education, we come in. Do we really still want federal government to determine whether we want to pro we want to open uh, 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 license a university to operate within our state? Does the president federal government should it have power to determine what should be the curriculum of schools in a particular state? Must you continue to have a national whatever of standard of education for every school? If you whether you like this text or not, that is what you want to read. Even if your state would have chosen to go on a particular path, path or teach a certain course. Because it is not approved in the national uh, curriculum, whatever, made by the Federal Minister of Education, you can't. These are issues. And I think the idea of, is either the states are allowed to have constitution, or this idea of concurrent legislative list is done away with, so that if we say that these matters are issues for the states, then it is taken that are exclusively for the states. That is what they I'm alone saying. can make that, laws that is what them. I'm saying. Mm. That is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying so we, we seem to agree on that. Yes. Yeah, because, f for instance, uh, to push further what, what he has just explained, for instance, if uh, the, the recent the decision of a court that said that the EFCC Act, for instance, law, should not and does not apply to states. Now, shouldn't there be a clear court outline, demarcation, as to who has powers to investigate and prosecute corrupt cases in a state or at the federal level? Uh, uh, the, the powers are there. Just like what happened in the Kitty State, the governor, who is the chief security officer, a petition was sent to the governor. And the governor set a panel. And the panel investigated a matter and gave their own recommendation. You cannot say because we are serving the federal that, you, the, that, that the governor should go to hell. No. They are there. But I think the problem we are having is the, um, political interest. All these things are there, except we don't want to There will always be political interest. That's what I'm. That's what mm. I'm saying. Mm. Because one, even if even if you have the separate constitution as you are talking about, and the somebody who is in the hem of affair doesn't believe in the rule of law, doesn't believe in the constitution, doesn't believe in the court order, we will still go back to where we are. Because if you have served as a governor of a state or as a speaker, and you are now in the federal, and they said within the, this particular period, you misappropriated a particular fund, you should go and clear. Yeah, say from for that panel. Don't say that no, that you cannot simply because somebody is covering you from Abuja. No, that is that's the problem. Even if like a half thirty constitution, give state, give communities, give local government, we we'll still go back to where we are. So what we are what we are saying is that irrespective of the fact that but those those constitutions will be recognized legal documents and instruments. Why not why not and why do you why do you prefer to have your own constitution since we have a uniform one? The only thing there is that that one, that the one that I have to do with exclusive, that has to do with state. Let it be exclusive. That is what I'm saying. You don't yeah, have to duplicate constitution. Let it be exclusive. When you say that this particular okay, issue of a secondary school, federal government, you don't need to come into anything concerning secondary school. Leave it for the state. Then you have something like just like um, uh, um, a uh, matrimonial issue. Federal government, leave it for state. But the, in, in this case, case, in yes. that case, Maswa. The, the states will be at liberty, like Mr. Alfa has uh, said. Yes. We are liberty to under the constitution. Under, under that constitution, yes. whatever powers are devolved to them, they will be at liberty to decide what the, their laws that are peculiar to them yes. should be. Yes. And not just uh, but you borrowed uh, hook, line, and sinker but, from the federal constitution, but, but because they are now. Uh, put in the exclusive list for states, yes. then they remain so that will make everything uniform again. No. No, sir. i just give you an instance of uh, a Igwe, um, a traditional uh, title holder. In my state, what is obtainable in my state may not be what is obtainable in Anambra state. Precisely. That's yes. the point. I don't say, but they should derive their power from somewhere. 
State assembly. So is shouldn't law. they derive their power from the constitution of the state? That's oh. the point uh, uh, he seems to be making. They should derive their powers from the constitution of that, that state. particular state. Yes. The duplication of a constitution. Um, no, I don't subscribe to that idea. Let us have a uniform constitution. You know, if you would have, a, are, if you would have a Supreme Court, one would expect it to have your own constitution. Yes. Which will regulate powers. I mean, let the political interest holders discuss this carefully. Nigeria has a peculiar situation, I must confess. We may, in the process of allowing states to have their own constitution, run into some problems. But ideally, if we want to have federation, a true federalism, as we tend to call it in Nigeria, which will also devolve not only judicial powers, fiscal powers, and you have it to the state, then, in the real sense of it, the, the, the component units should have their own constitution. Now, you talked about the equity issue. It generated quite a lot of discussion, interest in the last few days, where the Federal High Court sitting in Adoeke said, look, EFCC cannot invest the accounts of a state. Accounts of a state. The issue of, that is more like performing an oversight function on the account. That if there is issue with that, that it is for the State House of Assembly to inquire into how the funds of the state has been applied. But that if there is allegation against a named official of the state, the EFCC can investigate that allegation. In America, being a, a, a federal system, federation, they still have the FBI in, investigating certain federal offenses federal, yes. or, or for certain offenses that are considered to be outside the jurisdiction of the states. So it doesn't mean that because you are a federalism, whether a true federal federation or whatever, that the, the federal government now hereby becomes uh, incapable of doing certain things. Well, still there will be an AFCC like an FBI. But if you're going to have state police, which means there will no longer be a federal a Nigeria police force. It means the state should be able to have powers to do certain things. Require, for example, that certain things be done in taking statements, in, in um, arresting people. Those become federal uh, state issues. Unless, again, we're going to overload this our constitution with too many provisions to cater for matters within the state, to regulating the police force within the state, because then again, the police act will no longer be applicable when mm. we also do this. So a whole lot of things will happen. So it depends on us to determine whether we want to have a constitution made by the state defining the powers of these things or to load their constitution with all these things to show how the states will operate, how their organs will operate. And, or and how make it bigger than uh, it is already. Mazda, oh, well. okay. you are missing it somewhere. Oh, no, no. Okay, no, now, not just, let me just give you an instance. Because my fear is... The governors will have in the state. It's more about fear. Uh, yes. Excuse me. The, my fear is the governors will have in the state. You see what is happening in our in our local government election. We had the governors are giving a power to make laws as uh, as it has to do with uh, the state. We uh, see the governors or the state assemblies that are yeah. have the responsibility to all make the, so all, the, all the huh? thirty six states of the federation. All, all of them. I said all oh, without exception. They are just there as a robber stamp for, to, for the governor. Governor use them as they like. What are they doing? <laughs> They are not doing anything. I stand to be challenged. See, if we, we, this is this this is a gradual process, for now. But so let, that is let, a weakness in the system. But yes. does not make the system faulty. Let us ab, ab Let us have one uniform constitution, where all these powers will be shared. There are some ones because if you have in our constitution now, we have only one exclusive legislative list for the federal. The other one is concurrent. But if we have Exclusive legislative for the federal government. We have exclusive legislative leaves for the state yes. government. If it is possible, we even have exclusive legislative for the local government. So that when you are making a bylaw, you derive your power from somewhere. So if the local, if the go, if the governor of the state wants to do something, say no, I derive my power from the constitution. That is the, that is where I'm coming from. Yeah, that, I, I, that, isn't, that, isn't that a return to the unitary system that we talked about earlier on? Would that not mean that we have we still have a unitary constitution, whether or not uh, it's exclusive to the federal or exclusive to the state? Every state, for instance, will have the same uh, laws which are derived from the federal constitution. We are we, we are talking about the structure how, now. Yeah. So how how would, how would that make uh, those laws? Uh, responsive to the localities, that, to the local needs of the people. If they are all, if they are all the one right. federal constitution. Yes, yes, now because we have a, your own exclusive legislative list. There are some laws. There are some things that you not say at the national assembly. 
They said, no, Dogara, you cannot say this one. Um, um, Saraki, you cannot say this one. This one is not for you. It's for the state. There are some ones that you cannot even say in your, in your state house of assembly. They said, no, the councillors should do this one because it is there in the constitution. That is what we are talking about. Because okay. when, you are, when you allow the state to have their own constitution, the governors we are having now, they will hijack it. Even if we are going to have We such, will not always have them. If we are going to have such a thing, not now. Not now. Because when? Uh, when? No, I, I think let us have the restructuring first. Then we'll not get there. Because my father said, when a lizard head bites you, if you see, uh, if you want snake head bite you, if you see lizard, it will be running. It's because of our experience. And we said, no, we cannot. If you just allow these people to have their own constitution, sorry for you. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Watching us. Okay. Well, 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 recall that during the confinement of. Uh, uh, national honors on the chief justice of Nigeria. That was sometime last year, uh, Justice Water Onoge. Uh, the vice president, Yemi Oshibajo, called for reforms in the Nigeria judicial system. The vice president gave reasons why uh, the Nigeria judiciary needs overhauling. Let's take a listen to him. Since we do not force men and women to be judges, they voluntarily take on the position of high priests in the temple of justice. They will, of course, be held to a much higher standard, a much higher moral and ethical standard than the rest of us. They must not only be seen to be just, they must be just indeed. The mere perception of judicial malfeasance poisons the waters of justice, let alone the reality. The key to peace the keys, the key to progress, the key to everything good in any democratic setting is an adherence to the rule of law. There lies the solution to our problems. So to attain it, one fundamental principle is paramount. And that is the independence of the judiciary. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria, and Justice Onnoge, who is himself uh, a legal luminary by our standards. They are talking about the way forward for uh, the rule of law in Nigeria and indeed everywhere else. Now, gentlemen, let's take a look is, is this this whole concept of judicial reforms has been on the table for so long from almost from one regime to the other there has been talk of judicial reforms judicial reforms and it does it does appear that the more we look the less we see in terms of concrete reforms in the judicial system and now comes along this recommendation by the Erufai committee how is this expected to uh, affect the entire judicial system in Nigeria? Uh, well, you can see, let me start uh, with what the CJN said, the Honorable CJN said, the key, the key to our judicial reform is adherence to the rule of law. Now, a situation whereby a court of competent jurisdiction will give judgment and the, the the head of the security agent, the IG, who said, no, I will not obey. What are you reforming? That one is wrong. We should be able to have a government that will adhere to the rule of law. That one is wrong. Because if... We have also had even ministers of justice who refuse to obey court orders. That's what you're saying. Who appointed them? Is not the president. Now, if we can uh, have the uh, government of the leader that will adhere to the rule of law when somebody like Maxwell, if I remember that, yes, if another, if somebody takes me to court and get another, the, the order will be enforced. Then, what are we talking about? That one is one. Then two, when you are talking about reform in the judiciary, we should allow people who are competent to hate the judiciary. I'm saying it with due respect. Most of the times, you will see somebody, you have not seen that person, he just after call to bar, he just left outside the country. After 10, 12 years, he'll come back. The next thing is the judge. 
has not practiced law. This is where we are having, where we are getting issues. Because most of the times, when you are reforming, after reforming, somebody will be at the field to play the game. That is another area where we are having issue. So if you just allow people, you want to um, uh, appoint somebody as a, a judge, you should allow people. Let them apply. Let the best brain go there. That one is one. Most of the times, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it with due respect. If your father is a, 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 a judge or your mother is a judge, automatically you are going to be a magistrate. So this is another issue where we need to we, we need to address because if we don't address this issue, we are still going to have problem. So then generally, the reform in the judiciary is necessary. It's long overdue. We need that judicial reform. Mm -hmm. That is my submission. How do we remove this uh, process of reforming the judiciary from the vagaries of politics? Because regime after regime seem to have interpreted the reform process its own way. Is there have, this point must always be made. Most judicial appointments have a political undertone because the executive is the appointing authority at the state, the governor, at the, federation, at the federal level, the president, and the attorney general and some nominees of the president or the governor are part of the judicial body that actually makes this appointment. So it will always be there until we find a different solution about how the individuals get to the point before they do the actual appointment, which is concurring with the recommendation of the Judicial Service Committee or Council. Now, when we talk about reforming the judiciary, the political will to do it has to be there. We have to look at the mode of appointment of the individuals who, who sit on this bench, whether at the lower bench or the higher appellate bench. We have to ensure that he has alluded to some kind of um, nobility, family inheritance coming into the judiciary. We will not, will not deny that it's taking place, and it's becoming gradual. Now, but we have to look at, yes, your father is a judge, but if you marry to be there, it shouldn't stop you. And it should not because you have a parent who is a senior advocate or who is a judge, say you shouldn't be because that will create the impression that. But the point is, what is the objective of appointing them? How, in what kind of environment do they work? And, and does the, federal, the executive respect the, uh, the, the, in the uh, financial autonomy of the, of the judiciary by not trying to control how they get their funds and not using the release or non-release of the funds to get the judiciary to, to, to down on its knees to do the bidding of the executive? And we also have to look at judicial attitude. How, how do these people understand their jobs? Unfortunately, some of our courts are becoming too technical and losing sight of justice. Cases are lost on mere technicalities or oh, signing this or not signing this. Some things, and instead of looking at the substance and doing substantial justice to people, we rely on technicalities and then either cause a case to go and start afresh or to be lost. What is the judicial attitude? What is also kind of judicial attitude do we have that allows cases that have no business being in court from being there? Does the court have the way to impose costs on the lawyers? or the litigants, and this continuing attitude that oh, is against public policy to a what cost to a losing party should be looked at again because they are all part of the reform of the judiciary because the reform becomes necessary because cases are taking a long time to move through the courts and too many cases are being filed and too many things are being done both by lawyers, delay tactics are being brought in, for example, when people know that cases are useless, they bring them in or they file cases and know that the case has no future, then they have to stall and be able to make those cases not to move and they turn around and say, oh, the judge has taken a bribe. We have to look at the whole gamut and look at the ways of disciplining lawyers who engage in this and also look at ways of ensuring that the right persons come in as judicial officers to ensure that the judiciary is able to deliver on what it is supposed to deliver. Because the idea of judicial reform is that the judiciary is performing below par. It's not meeting expectations. And so there is need to make it more user-friendly, more efficient, more effective, and then to render the service it is meant to render to the people. So we need to look at the whole system and take the right decisions. It's not about slogan layering. And also that the executive will trust that the executive or those whose duty it is to enforce the court decisions will enforce them and respect them, whether, whether it is in their favor or not. So it, it, it's one big basket but we need to take it and do the right things. Mm. Now, let me take that very quickly and bring it to the case in question here, where you move some judicial responsibilities and powers to the states. 
where is the guarantee that these challenges that we're having here, uh, as it is at the present arrangement, which he has just clearly elaborated, will not rear their heads at the state level? That's what we're saying now. We cannot give the state all powers. Just like when we're talking about uh, um, appeal in the state, there are some, some matters we leave for the state. Something like election petition, um, uh, interpretation of the constitution, um, labor related matters, and uh, what have you, should go to court of appeal. The ones that has to do with the state, the custom, the indigenous, should go to the state. Of course, we can start from there. There is no way, so that if paraventure, the governor wants to hijack the system, the, the governor will know that, yes, you have a limit. You can only hijack the system when it has to do with confirmation of somebody. Up to this level. Yes. And up to that, uh, yes. it's out of your hands. Yes. So I think it will go a long way of uh, helping us. Mr. Farm Sigwe. Well, um, um, we must do that which I've always shied away from doing, and that is take the hard decisions. If the judiciary fails, the entire organs of government will fail, because everybody will become a wolf unto others, and the executive will run amok and be reckless and abuse their powers. Now, there will always be fear that people may do the wrong thing, may mm. not do what they're supposed to do. But when the courts are independent and are working the way they should work, the court will always be, be able to call these individuals to order. I'll give you a quick example. In the United States, Trump made so many promises while campaigning, how he was going to deport aliens, do this, ban this. He issued his first executive order, banning certain travelers from certain countries. And in a manner of days, the orders down. were struck down by mm. the courts. And Trump did not say, do you know who I am? I'm the president of America. You can't do this. What did he do? He obeyed and then appealed. And when he saw that the appeal was likely going to succeed, he modified his executive order. That is why we must be a state ruled by law, not by individuals. Yes. That is why we must ensure that we don't build a cult of big men and how we respect the law depends on, oh, uh, Buhari's body language. It has to be about the law, not about who is president. It can be the smallest of us all, but if he or she has the law behind him, whatever policy is implementing, we obey them because they are in accordance with the law. It doesn't really matter who he is. And the cult must be bold enough, irrespective of party affiliation or how you got there, to do the right thing, because it's all about protecting the rights of the individuals and building confidence in the city and the ability of the courts to render justice to any man without fear or favor, affection or ill will. Thank you very much. Afam Osigwe is a lawyer based here in the nation's capital. He's been joined by Maxwell Okpara, who's also a lawyer uh, who is here in the nation's capital. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and looking at the recommendations of the True Federalism Committee of the All Progressives Congress, which recommended that some judicial powers be devolved to the states and state courts of appeal be set up at those levels. Thank you so much for investing your time with us and do have yourself a wonderful time for the rest of today and the weekend. Bye for now. <laughs>